Like if there wasn't a little bit off the beaten path. Uh -oh. He is main decking three Path to Exiles this love week. Love it. And one Primal Command. <laughs> yes. That's a pretty oh, nice man. one. I love it. Primal Command, one of my favorite cards ever printed. Uh, you know, alongside stuff like Eternal Witness. It, it lets you do some really sweet things. Uh, you got Dominic Harvey on your left. He is on the draw. Chris Rapolito on the right with Affinity. Turn on North Doctor. Let's see what else he can do. Yeah, Memnite, Darksteel, Citadel to start. There's going to be some kind of cast. It's going to be a Vault Scourge. He'll fall to 18, paying the Phyrexian mana there. Yeah, paying the Iron Price. <laughs> I don't know about you, Ryan. I started rewatching Game of Thrones recently. Then uh, a lot of the old lexicon that I used four or five years ago really creeping back in oh, yeah. to my current day. <laughs> Pay the iron price is one of my favorite turns of phrase. Yeah. There was a Mox Opal as well for Ippolito. Can't use the mana just yet. Dominic Harvey is going to start with Gemstone Mine and Sakura Tribe Scout. Now, this is a, a decent start for Dominic Harvey. Now, he does only have three copies of Sakura Tribe Scout, but Tribe Scout, along with those four copies of Amulet of Vigor, are the one drops he wants to start with. Uh, something like Ancient Stirrings to Dig, it's a little bit slow against decks like Affinity. Ink Moth Nexus is the second land for Ippolito. There is a Cranial Plating hanging out in the hand. Looks like there's an Ornithopter there as well. Can start going to work on the beatdown plan. I mean, turn two, Cranial Plating Attack seems like a pretty good start. Put that on the Vault Scourge and get to work. And there is the Plating. Mox Opal will allow him to equip that. Vault Scourge, Vault Scourge will rumble in three, four, five artifacts. It's a swing for six. Now, a potential misstep here from Ippolito. I feel like Mim Knight's a free point of damage in this spot because Diamond Carvey can really put that Sakura Tribe Scout to good use. And if I had to guess, he needs it to be able to race this Vault Scourge with that Cranial Plating on it. Yeah, that extra damage would be nice. As things stand, Harvey at 14. Ippolito will be going to 24 off of that life swing. Let's see exactly how fast Harvey's draw is. Now, notably, this is a matchup where, you know, you don't just have to all-in combo. Engineered Explosives can be pretty powerful as well. I agree with that. Engineered Explosives, uh, quite good. Sometimes on zero, uh, popping off the uh, Ornithopters, Mim Knights, and Mox Opals to slow them down. Uh, kind of acting like a stone rain that kind of sweeps up a creature here and there. Now, uh, currently have uh, uh, Amulet of Vigor on the battlefield here, and that's going to let him float a mana and return that Simic Growth Chamber. So he gets two mana, and he can still put that land on the battlefield via Sakura Tribe Scout and pop that uh, Injured Explosives, knocking off both the Scourge and the Cranial Plating. Yeah, so the growth, growth Chamber picked itself up, but there's Explosives on too. It's going to hang out with that Tribe Scout activation. He's kind of hoping that Ippolito will play some other two-drop, but uh, we'll see how this plays out. Likely just has to pop this before he takes damage. Yeah, I mean, there's a chance that Harvey can just soak another attack and then use the the ex engine explosives like a kind of like a time walk, right? Like if your opponent doesn't put another two-drop on the battlefield, that's pretty good for you. Uh, with that said, I think you just got to get in uh, as much damage as possible uh, if you're the affinity player without putting another two on the battlefield. And Dom Harvey is, is uh, well within his uh, rights here to, to go ahead and activate the engine explosives to make sure that his life total stays pretty high. Pre-combat for Ippolito, a second Dark Steel Citadel, an Ornithopter. Here's an activation of the Ink Moth Nexus. So plus three on artifact count this turn. So it would be a swing for nine with the Vault Scourge. And it's going to rumble across, and the Ink Moth Nexus going to come as well. And this time you'll send the Mem Knight. Yeah, and I think Christopher recognizes that that Sakura Tribe Scout is integral to the game plan here from Dominic Harvey, and uh, was more than willing to throw that Mem Knight uh, in a trade with the Tribe Scout. And if I'm not mistaken, Dom's just going to take that one extra point of damage. Probably going to pop off that explosive here to make sure that his life soul stays nice and high at four, uh, 13 after the attack. Mm -hmm. And Harvey is going to give it a think. A very deliberate player come to cover him a lot this season. You don't get to be number one on the leaderboard without making careful decisions. Right. Tribe Scout. Growth Chamber is going to come in. Amulet of Vigor will untap that. Now, this is going to be interesting to see if Dom actually bounces the Gemstone or the Growth Chamber and chooses to bounce uh, the Gemstone uh, because it's on one counter but also just wants to hit those physical land drops. Now with Amulet of Vigor and Tribe Scout though, you do get bursts of mana from those bounce lands because they uh, trigger and then you can float mana before they return to your hand. 
So post b before damage, we did see Harvey fire off that explosive. So Ippolito only connected for one point and a poison. Harvey to 13, poisoned once. Post combat, Ippolito does have a steel overseer, so another powerful two drop as a follow up. All right, we got a really big turn here. Comes from Dominic Harvey. He peeled another Simic Growth Chamber. He's going to be able to generate six mana this turn before casting that Primeval Titan, uh, along with that Sakura Tribe Scout, giving them that extra mana. Primeval Titan is going to come down, and we're going to get to work searching through the library. Yeah, there it is. Growth Chamber. Pick it up. Tribe Scout. Growth Chamber again. Primeval Titan is on the table. Here's yeah. the first trigger. So much power. Searching through your deck for all of these strong two-mana lands. With Amulet of Vigor, the deck just operating on all cylinders here. Dominic Harvey piloting this game masterfully. Boros Garrison going to pump up that uh, Primeval Titan taking advantage of Slayer's Stronghold there. He's going to pick that up off the garrison, attacking for eight with the Primeval Titan. It will trigger again. Here's a Ghost Quarter and Kabira Crossroads. So game of two life to 15. Those will untap. Yeah, he can't quite do the big double striking uh, swing this turn via uh, uh, Sunhome Fortress of the Legion. Just able to give it uh, a little bit of a, a boost and haste. Attacking in for eight points of damage, but searching up that Kabir Crossroads to gain some much needed life points, as well as a Ghost Quarter to protect himself from that Ingmoth Nexus. And with that Steel Overseer untapping from Christopher Ippolito's side, could do a lot of damage in the air. Got to be careful. Yeah, yeah, so insulating himself on life and poison, a lot to like about that. Fine. The Titan did connect there. Ippolito will fall back down to 16. We'll see what he can produce. He was empty-handed going into this turn. And he's a bit behind now that the Primeval Titan has shown up. Yeah, I mean, that, that draw from Dom Harvey, finding that second copy of Simic Growth Chamber just allowed him to explode onto the battlefield with that Primeval Titan. And you can see just the strength of this Amy the Titan deck. You know, it just draw, drew one of its, you know, nine or ten uh, two-mana lands uh, after only having one in the opener. And the entire texture of the game has changed. Bolito is going to fire up the Ink Moth Nexus again, attack with Nexus and Ornithopter. Harvey has nothing going on. Ippolito will activate the Steel Overseer. We'll see if that forces any action. Now, here's the thing. Um, Dominic recognizes that the mana may be important to him. He's been a little behind uh, as far as mana is concerned because he had to use the uh, Bounce Land tricks with Amulet of Vigor to generate extra mana via Sakura Tribe Scout. But he also recognizes that the only point of infect that actually matters is the last point. And with uh, just four copies of Inkmoth Nexus as those poison generators. Uh, doesn't need to use the Ghost Quarter yet because he might actually end up needing that uh, Ghost Quarter to take out something like a Blink Moth Nexus, which is dealing him the last point of actual damage. Yeah, keep, keeps his options open. He'll take two more poison to three, and that Ornithopter is going to hit him for one point. 14 life now. He starts his turn with a Gemstone Mine. Be deploying that one. And here's that Primal Ooh. Command. <laughs> Choose two. It's like we're putting something on top of Ippolito's library. It's going to be Darksteel Citadel. Yeah. Uh, oh, man, that's that's nice. It says non-land permanent, so you got to be careful against those creature lands like Ink Moth Nexus because if you choose, uh, put it on top and, uh, like, gain seven life or whatever, uh, Christopher could just activate the Ink Moth Nexus and counter the spell. But here, Dominic is stunting the, the draw from Ippolito next turn uh, by putting that Darksteel Citadel on top of the deck. Yeah, and the Titans are going to attack again. Talaria West and another Simic Growth Chamber are the finds. Those are going to untap. Going to pick up that Gemstone Mine again off of the Growth Chamber trigger. Titans just going to connect for six. Ippolito down to ten. Now we're going to put a... Uh, we're going to float three here. We're going to use the Kerr Tribe Skull to put Growth Chamber on the battlefield, which is going to allow him to transmute Talaria West. And here he can get injured and explosives, clean up all the zeros, leave them with just a Steel Overseer um, can go get Pact Invocation to make sure that the next spell off the top of Ippolito's deck is no good. Just a lot of options for here, and I believe this game is all but locked up. Yeah, the find was Pact Invocation. Uh, because Harvey has maneuvered the deck in a slightly different way, these Pact Exiles, he is only on the one copy of Engineered Explosives this weekend. Ah. Uh, you can check that out and the rest of the deck list using the Cardboard Live extension. We have that uh, live now on the side of your screen. I'm proud of you, Ryan. That was a great pivot. Great pivot. <laughs> Cardboard Live, uh, a brand new extension here uh, that we're using on uh, the SCG Tour, and it's been such a boon to the broadcast, allowing the viewers at home to see the deck lists, see the sideboards as the matches are playing out. You get to know all the ins and outs, all the tutor targets, 
um, you know, figure out sideboard plans for yourself. That's one of the most uh, fun activities to do uh, while you're watching Game Magic, trying to figure out what you think the players are going to do. Yeah, get in the player's head, you know, learn some more about the game. Really fun exercise, a less fun exercise. Ippolito redrawing that Darkseal Citadel for turn. He's going to try to attack with the Ink Moth Nexus, but this time Harvey's just going to Ghost Quarter it. Yeah, now with his life total safely at 20, um, and he had the stunted draw there with the, the Primal Command uh, putting the land back on top of the deck. You know, he's getting to search out two lands every single turn, and usually it's going to be uh, a bounce land in Talaria West, which allows him to just keep on tutoring for, for more and more things. Slayer's Stronghold redeployed for Harvey. He's going to pump up that Primeval Titan again. In eight now. Yeah, now he's going to declare tax. He's going to go get Sunholm and a Vesuva. Vesuva's going to copy Boros Garrison. And uh, Sunholm's going to give that uh, Premier Titan double strike. And in order to survive this turn, I believe Ippolito's going to have to put every single creature he has in front of it just to not take lethal damage. So here's the attack for eight. There's Sunholm is the first land found. Well, I guess he doesn't have to give Vesuva. He can just get a, a gemstone mine since he has white men off the Kabir crossroads. So. Yep, and Gemstone Mine was the find. Threatening a 16-point attack. That's a lot to deal with when you're at 10. And Ippolito looks like he's lining up all three creatures. Memnite, Ornithoptera, and Steel Overseer on the Primeval Titan. It's going to get double strike. Yeah, just a, a ton of damage coming in, and Ippolito's losing his entire side of the battlefield. Even if uh, Ippolito activates that Steel Overseer here, um, eight points of, of first strike are going to take down the Overseer, uh, and the Memnite leaving him with just the Ornithopter to soak up those last few points. And that's going to be all she wrote. Christopher packs it up. Yep. Really hard to come back when you just have a bunch of worthless mana sources on the table, especially for a deck like Affinity, which is a you know deck that's trying to combine, ex execute synergies. Uh, but Dominic Harvey executed synergy is much better. Let's uh, take a look at how the players are going to sideboard here. For Dominic Harvey, his sideboard, he has three negate, two more engineered explosives, a Relic of Progenitus, a Hercules Recall. That's a nice one. Uh, Path to Exile, a Tireless Tracker, Corsair Crucifix, Hornet Queen, Reclamation Sage, Celestial Purge, Radiant Fountain, and Tormod's Crypt. What do you like here? Um, I like injured explosives, even though the affinity deck has a dynamic casting cost due to things like fire and mana and vault scourge. Um, you know, I think injured explosive is just quite good. You saw in game one, it took down vault scourge and a cranial plating, and uh, it's one of the few ways most decks in the format actually have uh, to deal with something like edge champion as well. So um, I like injured explosives for sure. Hercules recall is a good way to buy yourself a bit of time. Uh, just basically bouncing the entire side of Affinity's uh, battlefield. Path to Exile, just another removal spell. He already has three in the main deck. Going up to four seems good. Uh, other than that, maybe Hornet Queen because the Flyers uh, help clock all of the, the creature lands. And uh, it's a good one of to tutor for. Reclamation Sage, obviously a slam dunk. Uh, and maybe the Radiant Fountain just to help put yourself out of uh, Galvanic Blast range. Yeah, a few cards to like there. On Ippolito's side, he's got a sideboard fully stocked with four Lightning Bolts, two Edge Champions, two Graft Digger's Cages, two Spell Skites, two Hope of Gearpore, one Smash of Smithereens, a Pithing Needle, and a Thought Seize. Do you like anything here? Um, honestly, not a lot. Uh, the sideboards in, in Modern are, are pretty regularly geared towards uh, filling some gaps, but there's so many... Uh, variations on strategies people bring to the table that you can't really build your sideboard uh, in such a way that it beats everything. And here, Chris Ippolito with the four copies of Galvanic Blast in the main has gone with four copies of Lightning Bolt in the side to give him a bit of breathing room against creature-based decks. Um, and it's really costing him as far as there's no Blood Moon. Uh, there's no any sort of thing that really affects Lance, which is a pretty big deal. The only card that I might bring in, uh, maybe a Thought Seize, Maybe a Pithy Needle. Pithy Needle's got a few targets. You can name uh, Secure Tribe Scout. You can name Injure Explosives. You can even name one of the lands, either Sunhome uh, or the, the Boros Garrison. Not the Boros Garrison. The other one. The other Boros. Slayer land. Stronghold. Slayer Stronghold. That's the one. And then he'll probably bring in the Smash of Smithereens just because it's a way to interact with Amulet of Vigor as well as Coalition Relic. We are now in the month of March. Don't really know where the time goes, but I do know that means it's time for our March promotion on the Creature Collection. Fans, uh, the time is now for Veni Vidi Armadici. Yeah, we, uh, we actually saw this one back in January at the first show that Ryan and I did together. And uh, I came, I saw, I armadilloed 
is still one of my favorite phrases you've ever uttered. That's a good one. Yeah. So. Try to say it as much as possible. Yeah, but uh, as far as the creature collection is concerned, you can find all of these awesome items at go.sarcygames.com slash creature collection. You can pick up a sweet play mat, a cool pack of sleeves, as well as uh, various player bundles that we have uh, though over at starcygames.com slash creature collection. This is one that I really enjoy the play mat for. The full art oh, yeah. is more of an experience. Yeah, I mean, we, we pretty often, as far as magic cards are concerned, uh, get just a glimpse of the original art. And whenever we get to see the entirety of that art, uh, usually you see something that the artist kind of has off to the side that kind of helps tell the story. I mean, if you look at the, the sleeves, right, you, can, you can't really see the person in the back uh, bringing up the, the other piece of cargo, and you can barely see the, the treasure chest that's at, that's at his feet. And uh, all you see is this, this you know, guy, uh, armadillo conquering this, this land, you know. And, uh, yeah, the, the playmat definitely... Uh, sweet adds a lot of uh, to the story there behind the card. I really feel like I'm embarking on something. <laughs> looking at the play, you know, you, you hit land, you take that big breath of fresh air. Yeah, this is mine now. This is the armadillo land. Now, here's the thing. Here's a question. Um, what do you think is in those tre those chests? Because it might not be treasure. Uh, I'm thinking it might be food. You know what kind of food armadillos eat? I have no idea. Ants. Okay, it's treasure chest full of ants. Treasure chest full of ants. I'm going to write an A on this treasure chest so that I oh, know wait, no, it's full of ants. That's not armadillo. You're thinking of aardvarks? Ard, that's an aardvark. Anteater. Uh, you know. Hey, you said it confidently, so I believed uh, you. You know what? Shut up. I mean, issuing Leave the correction may, it might have been incorrect. I don't know. I was, I was on board to run the ant narrative. What's the, I mean, is it just anteaters? Because they have a real name, right? I mean, a lot of, I, I assume many things eat ants, right? There's so many of them. It only makes biological sense that this creature <laughs> is, is around in such high volume that is generally purposeless other than food. Yeah, but they bite. <laughs> Players are looking at their opening hands. Looks like Ippolito is going to be mulliganing here. Yeah, looking for uh, either a bit more of a consistent start or a faster start. Understands that uh, this matchup is just a big race and uh, hoping to dodge some of those interactive spells from the Amulet Titan deck and hoping to win the race before they can get that Primeval Titan on the battlefield. Ippolito has one copy of Smash to Smithereens in this sideboard. And, uh, Amulet Titan, it's a deck, part of the name, Amulet of Vigor. How much do you like bringing in Artifact Hate in a matchup like this? Uh, it's sometimes it's a swing and a miss. On Versus Live this week, uh, we actually played a, a matchup against Amulet Titan where I brought in uh, Destructive Revelry against Ross, and uh, I was playing Burn, and at the end of the game, I needed I had two Monastery Swift Spirits. He was at six, and if that Destructive Revelry was any other card in my deck that was a spell, he would have died. And it ended up being a Destructive Revelry. I never got to cast it, and he never played an artifact, and I died. You hate to see that. Yeah. But you got to do it to him. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have been uh, issued a, a correction by our director. Uh, they have said that technically I am correct. Because the best kind of correct. Armadillos do eat insects. Nice. So, you know. Ants are insects. Money. I was more thinking of the actual anteater with the, the With the big snout. Snout. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just the living vacuum cleaner. <laughs> All right, Ippolito here taking a keep on six and taking a look at the top card with a scry. Really tanking on it. This, this matters, though. Oh, he's got his back against the wall, and that top card could be the difference between winning and losing this game and ultimately the match. Yeah, and facing down a pretty rough matchup. You just saw there lost pretty convincing fashion in game one, was on the play then. Sideboard seems to benefit Harvey more. So, as you said, these decisions do matter a lot. He's made his decision. He's going to start here. Ornithopter, Ink Moth, Nexus, Mox Opal. Another zero, and it, the ability to play a two on turn one can be so huge, but he doesn't have it. He just passes with this material. Yeah, the, that's why it's the draws featuring Dark Soul Citadel alongside Mox Opal are so much more powerful than any of the other lands. And one of the reasons why most people are under the impression that those artifact lands on the ban list need to stay there because they make Mox Opal just so insanely degenerate. Start for Harvey, Forest, Sakura Tribe Scout. We've seen this before, back at Bolito's way. Here's a Blink Moth Nexus. 
Yeah, and Ippolito here looks like he has a couple of options on two. Going to go with that steal overseer. Try to get that online as quickly as possible. Maybe even try to steal a game with an Ink Moth Nexus. Maybe next turn, depending on what he draws. Because he has uh, an Ink Moth Nexus on the battlefield, an Arcbound Ravager in hand. And that steal overseer can make a lot of counters. Yeah, can definitely make some moves. Pressure on Harvey to go quickly. He'll start his turn with Ancient Stirrings. See what he can find here. Ooh. Big draw there for Harvey finding that engineered explosives. If he has a land amulet of vigor and two mana thing, uh, can uh, potentially wipe out the Mox Opal and the Ornithopter right now, or just potentially sandbag it for next turn. But looks like he needs the mana. He's going to take that Slesney Sanctuary. You know, that is the fine. No land drop yet. We'll see what he goes with. Gemstone Mine is the land. He'll tap that right away. Here's Path to Exile and the Overseer. Not going to let that one get out of hand. No, and this is uh, one of the reasons why the Amulet Titan decks uh, have started to implement Path to Exile. It deals with Thing in the Ice. It deals with Death Shadow, Gurmag Angler. But it also just kills little puny 1-1s one -ones like Steel Overseer. Now, giving your opponent a land is, is not great. And sometimes you play against decks or matchups where uh, they play a two-drop that doesn't really need to attack. And you can't really let them untap with it because they get uh, basically full value out of it. Think Dark Confidant, Steel Overseer, creatures like that. Um, and Dominic Harvey going with that main phase path to exile to keep that Steel Overseer in check. Now, Ippolito, only one card left in hand, might not be able to put that extra mana to good use. And goes and finds Island. At least has these creature lands. We'll see how much else he can muster. Signal Pest was the draw. As we go back his way. Has yet to do any damage. You know, Outside of that Steel Overseer, a relatively slow start for the Affinity deck. Reasonable materials, though. Yeah, I mean, you have to think, this is also just turn three. He didn't really have a, a great turn one. Uh, like, obviously, Mox Opal starts are quite good, uh, given the ability to use them on the first turn, but... Christopher Ippolito unable to do so uh, due to that mulligan, but did have two great follow-ups, Steel Overseer and Arcbound Ravisher both. Now, unfortunately for him, though, that Path to Exile did uh, keep it in check, but uh, Ippolito not out, you know, not uh, dead yet, has that Arcbound Ravager he can play here and potentially threaten Lethal in just a few short turns with that Inkmoth Nexus. So he's going to fire up Inkmoth Nexus. That'll come across for one poison, get that Tom Ross counter going. Yeah, and here it looks like he has the ability to deploy both Arcbound Ravager and uh, Signal Pest, so we'll, we'll see what he goes with. And here is the Ravager, and uh, looks like just a pass. End step, Harvey's going to activate that Tribe Scout, put in Celestia Sanctuary. Trigger to pick up a land, Gemstone Mine will be returned to hand. We go back Harvey's way. Now let's see if uh, Harvey can contain these threats. We know we, he put one of the engine explosives on the bottom of the deck with that first Ancient Stirrings. Here is another Ancient Stirrings. Look at five cards. Simic Growth Chamber is found. Yeah, this deck is insanely mana hungry, so no surprise this second copy of Ancient Stirrings also finding another land. Unfortunately, I had to put at least one Primeval Titan on the bottom there. I mean, while Ancient Stirrings is good, it is specifically limited to finding colorless cards, so can't find Hardened Scales in the Hardened Scales Affinity deck. Uh, you know, can't find Primeval Titan in the Primeval Titan deck, but still finds Amulet of Vigor as well as all those potent uh, two-mana lands. Harvey will play that Gemstone Mine again. We'll go back Ippolito's way. He'll draw for turn. Smash the Smithereens. No targets. Right, and, uh, you know, there's a good chance that he doesn't get any of this game. So, But he still has the Ink Moth Nexus, and uh, unless Dom has another Path to Exile, there's a chance Ink Moth uh, ends up stealing this game for uh, Ippolito. And Signal Pest is going to be cast pre-combat. He does have the option here, which sometimes you do with Affinity, where you go for a half-lethal Ink Moth Nexus. You can get that up to five counters this turn. Right. Um, it's a very aggressive line. He's going to activate the Ink Moth Nexus. We'll uh, check how much he wants to connect for here. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a whole lot of food for the Ravager. Um, aside from his creatures, he just has uh, a Mox Opal and a Bling Moth Nexus. So, you know, this, this chip damage here, it's not really threatening to Dom Harvey. So even if he has the answer, he doesn't have to bite. He can just wait uh, on uh, Christopher Ippolito to perhaps make a, a small misstep here and uh, steal the game with, you know, just like a Path to Exile in response to shoving all in on the Ink Moth. 
Yeah, so just one coming across off the Ravager, no sacks there. The Ink Moth Nexus will bump Harvey to two poison. As on step, he'll put another bounce land in with the Tribe Scout. So that Signal Pest there is kind of plus two on the Ink Moth Nexus next turn. So you have two, three with the Ravager, four with the Opal, five with the Nexus, six with the Ornithopter. Uh, doesn't take too much to make the Ink Moth Nexus lethal from here. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 there's also just the, the mostly unknown ability on Blink Moth Nexus, which uh, it, it can pump other, uh, uh, I want to say Nexus. I, I forgot there's a caveat, Blink Moth or something like that. I, th I think it is Blink Moth creature, yeah. Yeah, so it, it, it can pump other Blink Moth creatures, and Ink Moth Nexus is, of course, a throwback to Blink Moth Nexus, uh, one coming from Mirrodin, the other from Scars of Mirrodin block. Harvey just had Talaria West. Going to send things back at Bolito's way, leaving a lot of mana untapped. Yeah, I, I think he had the ability to summon respect from Evil Titan and cast it. Instead, just chooses to hold up mana here, and I think he does have Path to Exile. Just deathly afraid of that all in shove from that Arcbound Ravager. So here's an activation of the Ink Moth Nexus for Ippolito. Attack with the Nexus, Ravager, and Signal Pest. He'll get a Battle Cry trigger here. Yeah, now uh, Ippolito going to probably use that Blink Moth Nexus to pump the Ink Moth twice. Signal Pest has already pumped it once. And uh, might actually go for it, but might just go for the slower burn. Just uh, kind of chip away at Dom Harvey's life. Yeah, played a second Blink Moth Nexus. Here's an activation on one. Now looking at a three power Ink Moth Nexus. See exactly how this combat resolve. You do see that Harvey does have a Path to Exile in hand. Yeah, and it looks like Dom's going to bite. Wants to not be scared of uh, dying, so going to go ahead and use Path to Exile on Ink Moth Nexus. If Lido actually chooses to let it resolve, I believe he does have um, a mountain in his deck as well, so he's going to fetch that up off the Path to Exile instead of sacrificing it to the Arcbound Ravager, putting a lot of value in that extra mana to be able to uh, cast a red spell, potentially if his Mox Opal dies since he does have that Smash of Smithereens in hand, or potentially just activating his uh, Blink Moth Nexus and attacking while still being able to cast spells. So the hit's just going to be for two regular damage off that Ravager. No sacrifices there. Harvey will fall to 17. We'll go back to Harvey's side. I think you mentioned he had a Summoner's Pack in hand before. See if this is the Titan turn. Yeah, and he, I mean, he may not need it. Like, he might already just have a Primeval Titan, and uh, we'll have to see, see how this plays out. I have to imagine Dom has this slight fear in the back of his brain that uh, if he casts Summoner's Pact and taps out, there's a chance he just gets hit with a Blood Moon. Sometimes Affinity plays one or two Blood Moon in the sideboard. And, of course, these players don't have access to each other's deck lists. But uh, Ippolito is showing two islands and a mountain, a lot of basics. So it's possible Dom just assumes that the, the Blood Moon is going to be cast next turn or something and just has to be afraid of it. And... Uh, you know, probably fetch up even a second copy of Forest mm -hmm. as he uh, uses that Primeval Titan. Yeah, it is a mana base that uh, in some ways does seem like it would be indicative of a Blood Moon, right? Yep. Yeah. Having so many basic islands, you have your mountain as well, but Harvey is going to cast a Summoner's Pact. I have a feeling Ippolito's been hit with a lot of Path Exiles, a lot of um, Assassin's Trophies. Assassin's Trophies, even Field of Ruin. I bet there's someone in his local playgroup that just hammers his creatures with those removal spells, hammers his lands with Field of Ruin, and has gone all the way. He has four basic lands in his main deck, two mountain and two island. Um, all, also, that helps him cast things like Thoughtcast into more spells off the top of the deck, as well as uh, all the way up to four mana for that uh, Karn Sign of Urza. So it's not a Primeval Titan turn, it's a Hornet Queen turn. That's what Harvey finds with the pack. He'll cast that one. Four Bs coming along with the Queen. That'll do some good blocking on this battlefield. Yeah, Hornet Queen obviously pretty strong here. Um, the Flyers, you know, brick wall the entirety of what Ippolito can produce. Blocks all the uh, Blink Moth, Nexus, and things like that. Without Etch Champion, I don't think Ippolito can really get out of this. And since he doesn't actually have those Blood Moons, um, you know, there's no way for him to steal a game here even by casting one here and uh, having Dominic Harvey die to his own Summoner's Pact. 
And draw for turn was Galvanic Blast. Hand is Blast and smashed to smithereens for Ippolito. Has two Blink Moth Nexus, Ornithopter, Arcbond Ravager, Signal Pest. That's five creatures against five Death Touch Flyers. Yeah, and even though he has a Galvanic Blast in hand, he doesn't have that Ink Moth Nexus anymore to threaten poison damage. He just has to win with regular damage, and that's going to be all but impossible uh, at 17 life with five blockers all having Death Touch. This game seems to be slipping away from him. He's thinking about exactly what he wants to do. Is there a way to maybe Galvanic Blast to get in a chip shot here? Maybe maneuver something onto the Ravager, but it, it's a really tough spot for him. And the problem is um, you can't really, I mean, you can't stack damage anymore, right? So, like, every creature you send to the red zone is either going to end up getting eaten by the Ravager or eaten by a Hornet. And, of course, those uh, awesome new uh, Brad Nelson tokens, those insects uh, on, on uh, Dominic Harvey's side. Uh, this is part of our uh, personality collection. Perhaps the strangest personality <laughs> token we've issued so far. Now, there, there are some uh, insects in the wild that um, kind of take on the look of the, the thing that they eat. Okay. And I think that's kind of the play on it because it's, uh, it's a Brad Nelson bug coming out of a Brad Nelson dead face. Yikes. It's super gross. That is very morbid. Yeah. Just like Golgari <laughs> and bugs. I also love how the, the token is, is dual use because it's like kind of half black and half green uh, as far as the border is concerned. It's a nice one. It's a nice one. A lot of uses for your Brad Nelson insect token. All right. All right. Ippolito's decided to shove. Yeah, this is this is tough here. I mean, the, the weird thing is the signal pest doesn't have power, and the Hornet Queen can block the Ornithopter and, and not even really threaten to die. So, Signal Pest, Ravager, Ornithopter come across. There's an insect on all of them, the Hornet Queen proper on the uh, Ornithopter. I believe it was going to Galvanic Blast, the bee that was on the Ravager before damage, eat the other creatures. So now he has a 3 3. I'll tell you what, Ippolito knows he's in trouble. He tried to piece something together. It didn't work out. Dom Harvey found, obviously, the correct block and uh, kind of a desperation attack. There's not really much to be done about it. He'll go back Harvey's way. He'll pay for his summoner's pact, and he's just going to hang out with his bees. Passes back. Yeah, another Mox Opal to draw from Ippolito, and the door is closing. And the only targets for that smash of smithereens he's had in hand for a while now are on his side of the table. Yeah, this is why you see, even though Smash of Smithereens does have that three damage caveat, which goes really well with the four Galvanic Blasts and the four Lightning Bolt and the sideboard, uh, you know, the versatility of Smash of Smithereens is significantly worse than that of something like Destructive Revelry or any sort of uh, disenchant that can hit creatures or, or sorry, that can hit uh, artifacts or enchantments. Another Summoner's Pack for Harvey. Now it's prime time. Primeval Titan drummed up there. Yeah, Dominic Harvey just playing this game again very well methodical to make sure that he covers all outs but uh, here just Casper Evil Titan searches up Slayer Stronghold actually returns it to his hand because he already had the Boros Garrison activates it so that Primeval Titan can have haste because he hadn't played a land yet for the turn and that's going to allow him to attack and find two more lands off uh, out of his deck and uh, even without Amulet of Vigor just putting on a show yeah, here's that attack for eight not too concerned about that 3-3 Ravager here. Yeah, and here, I mean, Ippolito could just make it a, a six-power Ravager, but that would eat all of his artifacts, and he would have nowhere to modular. Ooh. Second trigger is going to find Celestial Sanctuary and Ghost Quarter, which he will return the quarter to hand, which he does have up because of that Tribe Scout. Right, and I think that that's a, a pretty big deal here. Just kind of inching away at any possible way Ippolito could get back into this game. I think Ippolito's best chance is that Harvey doesn't pay for that pack next turn. Yeah, there's the dice on top of the deck, and Dominic Harvey going to make sure he's able to pay for that next turn. I, I don't see any card off the top of Ippolito's deck getting him out of this one. Ippolito's going to survey the situation, that uh, Titan attack. I think we're still in combat here. Thinking if he wants to throw that Ravager and all the artifacts in the way. It's not pretty. No, it's not pretty because it leaves you 
with three lands as your only permanents uh, facing down a Hornet Queen, three tokens, and a Secured Tribe Scout with a, a handful of pretty decent cards as well. Oh, the, so the Titan did connect, Hippolito down to 12. His draw for turn, Karn Scion of Urza. A little too little too late, I think. It's a pretty impactful spell. It's nice to have that four mana stuff. And this is a point we've seen uh, Andrew Ellenbogen pick up Frenzy Affinity. He's written some great articles about that over on StarCityGames.com. But the four drops in Ippolito's deck, not quite that. You could maybe see an absurd experimental Frenzy turn from here, but it's really tough to do it in any kind of honest way. Right. Um, I don't know. I mean, even, even with an experimental Frenzy, I can't imagine that the top of the deck would ever be kind enough to you to allow him out of this one, but Karn is, is definitely better in some matchups because it has a more immediate impact, but here uh, it's just nowhere close to good enough. So he sacrificed Mox Opal to Arkbond Ravager, then he'll play another copy, keep that one. He'll deploy the Karn. You can either plus that to kind of draw a card or make a mopey ground creature. Yeah, I mean, the, the ground creature is, is potentially pretty big. Um, you know, but again, that Primeval Titan next turn is going to even have double strike as it attacks and finds Sun Home in a bounce land, and then he can use Secure Tribe Scout or uh, to uh, put it on, on the battlefield at instant speed. So a lot of potential damage coming across next turn from Dominic Harvey's side, and even with those Karn Strucks, that, uh, obviously Matthias Hunt token, we have another of our uh, personality tokens. The Math Bot. Yeah. So he makes that token. Looks like currently three natural artifacts. Well, rather, he has, you know, Ravager, the assembly worker itself, and the Mox Opal. All right, pace for Pact. Step one. Now, step two is can you find lethal? And I, this is uh, maybe a question for, for Edgar, but uh, I, I don't think you need to be a math genius to figure this one out. Plenty of mana on the table. That always makes it a lot easier. Yeah, it also makes it a little bit more complex. Becomes, That's true. It becomes harder to find the optimal line to play around everything. But, you know, with Ippolito uh, not having any uh, colored mana sources untapped, just those two, uh, Blink Moth Nexus, Dominic Harvey, going to hard cast another Primeval Titan, going to use Slayer Stronghold to give that one haste, and probably going to ship in with most of his creatures. And I think he can still find Sun Home and another land and uh, do double strike on whichever... Uh, Primeval Titan, he so chooses. Let's see, find Sun Home and Kabira Crossroads. We go up to 19 here. And there you see the Stronghold pumping the fresh Titan. Leaving up Ghost Quarter. Ooh, and the bees are going to join the party. The Hornet Queen and one of the insect tokens will attack, as well, along with the two Primeval Titans. Yeah, now Dom has currently... Uh, only two mana untapped, and uh, all of his lands entering the battlefield here off of those Primeval Titans are also going to be tapped. So I don't think he actually has lethal this turn. Um, even I mean, he has 16 points of trample, so maybe. Yeah, I think paying for the pact maybe pushed him off being able to fully shove this turn. Yeah. Now, uh, <laughs> interestingly enough, he uses uh, his Vesuva that's coming in to copy the opposing Blink Moth Nexus to give him potentially one more threat off of uh, his, his lands. But there's just a ton of damage coming in here. Hippolito's going to lose his entire side of the battlefield just to survive. And I think there's still going to be a Primeval's Titan on the other side of the battlefield afterwards. Harvey also went and found its Laria West, which he picked up with another Growth Chamber. So he has that Tudor effect in hand. Just keeps getting worse for Hippolito. And if it's not lethal now, this is definitely lethal in the following turn. Yeah, I mean, this is the turn where Ippolito has to block with everything and lose everything. And even if he's able to modular onto something, uh, you know, the Ghost Quarter currently has a Blink Moth Nexus covered. And I'm pretty sure the Matthias Hunt token also has to block just to prevent lethal. So here's an activation of Blink Moth Nexus. So that is another artifact that makes the uh, construct a little bit bigger. So now he has two four fours, so they're going to jump in front of one of the Titans. The eight power one. So 
All right, Ghost Quarter going to go after that Blink Moth Nexus. Um, it's going to float mana and activate the other Nexus just to give uh, Ippolito the ability to sacrifice an extra artifact to that Ravager. Yeah, so the Ravager does eat one of the Nexus before combat. Kind of a funny equation, right? Because you're taking away an artifact for your construct but growing the Ravager. But he is still plus one on the Ravager because he activated the other Nexus. Now, Dom Harvey, perhaps a, a bit of a misstep here. He's only going to be hitting in for 11. Eight from the Titan, uh, two from... Oh, no, it's only six from the Titan, so, so it's only nine. Hippolito going to survive the attack, and uh, the I believe after the Ravager dies, the Construct token dies as well. Um, maybe not. Okay, never mind. Just one short. So the Ravager's going to modular on to the Blink Moth Nexus. Harvey's going to path to exile that. Now State Bay's effect should take care of that construct. Yeah, because it's it doesn't have uh, it doesn't have a, a you know a set power and toughness. It's always based on the other artifacts you control. And with some artifacts dying in combat, one getting nixed by path to exile, uh, Ippolito here just out of everything. Dominic Harvey just putting on a clinic. His deck just functioning on all cylinders and. Finally, we get the tap out from Ippolito. All right, Dom Harvey wins this match 2-0. Uh, it's one of those matchups where Affinity is is kind of forced to, uh, to 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 play the racing game. You can't.